Arc 3.0 has given us some interesting exotics for us to tamper with, and like now Warlocks have received a rather odd but quite powerful exotic, which is capable of making you amplify 24-7. You may have heard of Fallen Sunstar, and some of the reviews for it are positive, but did you know that combining it with Cold Heart also triggers its effects with ease, or how you can proc Ionic Traces non-stop with Fragments and Cold Heart combined? If not, then you come to the right person as I'll show the breakdown as to how to make the Fallen Sunstar S tier in a few ways. But you know what else will make you amplify 24-7? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video, then I'd really appreciate a like, a sub, and for you to turn on your notifications as it goes a long way for me. For the subclass, we will be using Storm Trance as this provides the best coverage in hitting multiple enemies at once and can allow you to get Iron Traces with ease. To make the build work so that you can produce Iron Traces by the dozen, we will need to actively jolt our targets and keep them jolted so that traces can be produced when possible. Think of the build like an electrical conductor, where you're the main source and you pass the charge off back to others which will rotate back to you and so forth. Once you see the build in action, you understand what I'm saying a bit more better, but in simple terms, you jolt and get kills, targets give you unlocked traces, unlocked traces go to your abilities and allies, and then repeat. So let's go over the aspects and fragments you use for this. We have Lightning Surge, which allows us to turn ourselves into a ball of lightning and bring it down onto our position. We then have Electric Static Mind, where defeating a target with arc abilities, or being jolted and blinded, will create iron traces. For Fragments, we have Spark of Discharge, where arc weapon final blows have a chance to create iron traces. Spark of Resistance, which provides a 25% damage reduction while surrounded. Spark of Irons, where defeating a jolted target creates iron traces. And Spark of Shock, where your arc grenades jolt targets. For stats, we have 60 in resilience, 100 in discipline, and 40 in strength. I have decided to focus primarily to my grenades so we can get targets jolted at first, and then use the rest of my gear to create the needed iron traces once in hand. You can play around with this, so don't worry about needing to have 100 discipline to make this work. For key mods, we have elemental charge for becoming charged with light via wells, elemental ordnance where using your grenades can make wells, formed of might for a 25% weapon elemental buff of matching type. Elemental Time Dilation for extending the duration of time-based Elemental World mods and Heavy Handed where being charged with light can get you back half or melee after a charged melee attack. Following the stats and fragments used, this will allow you to effectively create armor traces at your pleasure with or without the following Cold Heart used. I've used Cold Heart just to show you how utterly powerful the build can become when you fully lean into the Fallen Sunstar exotic as a whole. Once you use other arc weapons, it starts to become a bit more different in its usage. But this is also why we have max out discipline stats, with the fragments we can fill in the void with. Now for the next part, you'll want weapons that correspond with the gear we are using. Cold Heart for secondary, ideally, but any arc weapon can be used as well. So for primary, we have the Pisaco 22 SMG with Hip Fire and Pug List, and this is a brand new sewers weapon with an interesting perk. The Pug List perk grants the user melee energy from kills made, and is a counterpart to Demolitionist, which is grenade focused. With the perk, I have found that it can be useful when using the Lightning Surge aspect as we can chain our traces and the aspect together to always get our targets with our melee and kickstart the jolt phase of the build. However, I have found that it's not necessary to use the following weapon and perk if you're getting our traces back quickly. So except from that, it's also relatively a good weapon for its frame type and can do some heavy damage against majors even without mods attached. For secondary, we have the Cold Heart Trace Rifle, which was updated quite a while back to allow users to create iron traces on kills. Now, before Arc 3.0 was a thing, the weapon was okay to use. It had good and steady damage, and is fun to use as an off-meta weapon, but it's not good enough for most endgame content because of its ammo economy and damage buildup being required to make it viable. In this season though, the weapon is slowly going to get picked up by players who want to make full use of iron traces straight out of the package, and as shown, you'll see exactly what I mean. I've added the ability for the weapon to hit harder and provide us with non-stop ability energy for as long as we keep the trigger going. It's great when you get going right, but at the same time I would also use Trinity Ghoul as that's a weapon that works really well with added clearing and simply get an iron tracer to flow out of you if you use your abilities right. For Heavy, we have the Chain of Command Machine Gun from last season and it's quite effective with being used for low tier endgame content. With this weapon, you can use Osmosis for the weapon type to change to Arc, and from there you can use the Foot of Might buff for the 25% weapon buff. At the same time, Heavy Machine Gun's also got a separate buff as well on top of what we're currently getting, and this season is fully leaning into the use of them more. 
Now, if you haven't got this, then any arc based heavy is fine, since you're mainly being used in it against bosses or match game targets. For stats, we'll be focused on discipline to its fullest, so we produce iron traces as we please, but also trigger the dual effect to get the amplified effect for ourselves. Having it at 100 will allow you to use your storm grenades at a more frequent motion compared to the rest of grenades offered. It can also cover more ground within a short time frame as well. I do believe that, with how common iron traces are for this setup, you don't need to follow my footsteps and go for 100 as well, as long as you are actively procking buffs. Reducing this stat down to 70 is fine, as we have elemental worlds to also help us out on top of the Iron Tracer expansion provided via Fallen Suns or Exotic. I also recommend you don't use Demolitionists, as that probably won't be needed, but if you decide to reduce your stats further, then it won't hurt too much. For Resilience, we have ours at 60, which is low for damage reduction provided, and this was because of a trade-off of me using grenades more, rather than using Resilience to this time. From testing, we can reduce our discipline down just enough so that we can push on points into resilience instead. And if I was to do so, I could get both my resilience and discipline down to 70 to 80 each. Now, just a heads up that using our subclasses at the moment has been dodgy for many, as the damage reduction for the whole of the subclass isn't working properly right now. This means that even if you have 100 resilience, the damage you take will be quite a lot still. But don't forget, as Bungie are aware of this bug, and it will get fixed soon. For melee, you can leave it at 40 to 50, as we have the heavy handed mod available that will fill in the gap of us getting our melee back quickly. Trust me on this, with how everything is set up, you don't need to worry about anything else. Left with wise, we have Arc Typhon mod for creating orbs of power via magic arc elements, Trace Rifle, a machine gun scavenger mod for getting bonus ammo reserves, and Outreach for reducing melee cooldown when using class ability. Now, here's a list breaking it all down for you. For Head, we have Discipline, Arc Siphon, and Elemental Charge mod. Arm, we have Discipline, and Elemental Ordnance mod. In Chest, we have Discipline, Thermal Shot Plating, Concussive Dampner, and Fault of Might mod. Leg, we have Maya Discipline, Machine Gun Scavenger, Trace Fiber Scavenger, and Elemental Time Dilation mod. Bond, we have Maya Resilience, Outreach, and Heavy Handed mod. Now, let's break down what the following Sunstar Exotic does before we dive in further. It states that iron traces you create move faster and grant you additional energy. Nearby allies also get energy from our trainers collected. Now, this sounds quite simple to use and not all that expiring for offering much, but this is actually very powerful when you notice that iron traces you get at first is around 20% of the energy given to you. Once you place the following exotic on, you then get around 30% more, which means that you only need to get 3 iron traces for a full ability back there and then. You may think this is better than Crown of Tempest, which is similar in effect, and it is good, but not better than what Crown does. The Fallen Sunstar is more of a support exotic that allows you to spam abilities and get rows upon rows of iron traces back, which will feed back into your team. Crown of Tempest is more designed for solo players who want to clear areas up faster in any solo based content. Both of them are good, and in fact godly in their own environments, but they are both designed for a different purpose in mind, even though they are similar in design. This is why the version you're seeing right now is great for endgame content, as we can sit back and gather energy non-stop with little hassle involved. In mid-tier content, with no champions, I can use my cold heart with glee and keep everyone buffed. In high-tier content, I can swap my cold heart for another arc exotic instead, and carry on like normal without much loss involved. I will revisit this exotic again once I reach higher level as I want to create a build focused around endgame nightfall, dungeon and raid specifically. If you haven't got the exotic yet, I recommend you get it now as you'll be missing out if you don't. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny related stuff. Once again, thanks for stopping by, stay safe, and I'll see you all in the next one.